these people now. All right, so hello everybody. Hope you all doing well this morning. For those of you that don't know, or just joined or from Harris's chat or whatever, I do this with every single character. I go through their moves top to bottom, and I talk about maybe a few ways to use those moves, moves that I recognize, uh, moves that I don't recognize, and the purpose being is to help both myself and other players, new or not new, or are familiar with these characters. Uh, so, that's pretty much my goal here. So, now I'm going to do it again with Feng Wei, even though I just broke my stick a week ago. I had to move around some buttons to get this thing working. So that's how I do. And now here's what I do know about Feng. I've never really went through his move list in detail in any of the past games. Uh, but like, you know, it's pretty much obvious if you see Feng for a while, you know what's up with him, right? Up close, he's a fucking beast, right? When he's right in your face, his poking is really good. He's got this cheap ass fish hook. He's got a really good down forward one that even though it's 14 frames to the 13 frames, it is zero on block. And then, in general, he's very threatening to swing against because he has this cheap-ass back one, which even though it's unsafe, it's a 10-frame unsafe move, which means, unless you're kind of anticipating it, you're probably not going to get a punish on it. Like, you, you can, but if you, it takes some anticipation for the most part. Like, reacting to it is very difficult because it's 10 frames. It's just, ah, and then you got to punish. So, um... Yeah, Feng up close is a beast. And then far away, he's, uh also quite threatening but not as threatening as a lot of other characters because as far as like fast with punishing uh options he has to close the gap from let's say here he has a lot of like moves that uh cover a lot of space but a lot of them are really slow 21 frames is probably the most dangerous one a 21 frame launcher right that's uh negative 15 on block but you know he has all these pesky low pokes uh this i believe is negative 15 on block right He's very, if you keep him back here though, if you keep him back here, he's generally very risky. See, negative 15, he's got the dumb shoulder, negative 14. He has to take some risks, and uh, most of his options are relatively slow. It's just gonna be shit like this that you have to worry about, because it's a pretty strong whiff punish at 30 damage, but it's not like a launcher, you know? He's more dangerous up close, but he's not bad back here. That's the point. As far as weaknesses that I know about Fengwei, uh, I know his launchers, shit like this hot kick range is trash. Like his launchers, his fast launchers, not not the best. The range is kind of shitty. Uh, this needs counter hit, right? Uh, this is a really good safe on block mid launcher, but he needs to be right in your face and the juggle damage is low because he has to convert with a jab, I think. I don't know if he has anything else. That's too slow. Yeah. Oh, does this work for the... Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. So, yeah. Um, but still, like, one of his past weaknesses is not around anymore. Hasn't been around since Tag 2, because Tag 2 damage was so high. One of his past weaknesses were his juggle damage was generally low. They gave him this in Tekken... They gave him this in Tekken 6 to compensate for that, because that does a shitload of damage, even off of regular launchers. You can still get that. That's a high damage filler, high damage launcher, high damage everything. Uh, so... Fengus is kind of like, he feels like a really complete character now, but you have to really, if you're going to use him, you have to really get into his move list, right, right into the thick of things. You have to really know a lot of his moves. Not all, obviously, but I feel like with Feng, you have to know more moves to make the most out of him than you do with most of the characters in the game. You know, he's not your average, like, standard poker character. Another thing about Feng is, if you're new to Tekken, is um, he has really good defensive options built into his moves, like this. This is the popular one, of course. And then he has a fucking, what is it, Party Clouds, which I don't know how to do right now. There it is. The fucking Wing Chun shit. Uh, a lot of built-in defense into his move kit. That, uh, it, they're good moves. Well, at least some of them are. Uh, they're good options, but you're gonna... You have a chance of relying on them a bit too much. To the point where you'll sacrifice learning defensive basics and replace it with stuff like this. And then this. And, you know, basically, in general, instead of just using movement and safe movement and blocking, a lot of newer players, when they play some Feng fall into the trap of overly relying on these. Like, they don't think block first. They think, I'm going to use this to avoid your move. I'm going to use this, you know? So, you got to be careful with that if you're relatively new to second. That doesn't mean you shouldn't use them. You should be... I'm just thinking you should be cognizant, cognizant of that kind of thing. So now that we got that little general explanation out of the way, 
going to start from the top here, as always. Feng, 10 frame, 1 jab, plus 1 on block, plus 8 on hits, nothing new there. And then Feng's jab strings, uh, he has quite a bit. 1-1. One, one. This is a counter hit, Beitsu, if I'm not mistaken. This is high mid. 10 frame startup, obviously. I don't think this is a natural combo, is it? But not on normal hit. On counter hit, it is. it's not even. But uh, it's negative 11 on block on the second hit. But the whole point of this is the second hit is a counter hit bait to go with your jab pressure. And it's a start. it starts juggles on a counter hit, right? So you land this, you convert it into whatever, right? Uh, so that's really what 1-1 one, one is about. So in general, while you're doing your jab pressure, you know, you'll throw that out every once in a while. There's enough of a gap in there to really fuck with people. Uh, I don't know if you could step it. It might just be you have to block punish it. Can't step it. It looks like there's enough of a gap that an armor could do it though. What's his armor move? Um, armor is red, right? Yeah. Damn, he's one of those with a forward forward input for his armor move. It's gonna be annoying to do. Okay, so yeah. You can armor through that if your armor move is fast enough. Uh, he will probably block it if it's not fast enough, and that can really fuck you over because you take the damage from the armor move, the bonus damage. <laughs> and then he, uh, he's still safe. And if your armor moves a high, he'll duck it and launch it. So, so this is a really good move. Only negative 11. That's a good risk to take. Uh, but of course, if you can armor through it, that means you can also rage art through it. If you really think it's coming, I wouldn't recommend it against that anyway. I just like checking that stuff to be sure. Anyway, and then he has 1-1-2, one, one, which I guess is supposed to keep him safe off of 1-1. One, one. Supposed to be like a last hit check there. Ah, okay. Yeah, people like to do this. Okay. Negative 14. Okay, so he has a lot of options. Is that part of a 10 hit? Yeah, one, one, two, one, three. Four. Alright, so I'm gonna check something about this. So he's one of those that has a useful beginning to his 10 hit combo. Interesting. Ah, I just noticed that. Okay. Okay, so the low, the low is never guaranteed whether the fourth hit counter hits you or not. But I definitely, uh, now I know why, I definitely see up to the fourth hit of this string. Reason being, if you get the counter hit on a second hit, you can still convert that, I think, right? Is that true? Nope, you recover too slow. Okay, then I don't know why I see this. I see people use this, and I don't remember if they're good fang players or bad fang players. Maybe it's just the first two hits that he's throw. Alright, that's definitely a combo. The second hit, uh... If the third hit counter hits, the third hit is gonna combo. And he's at negative one. So I guess this is the, uh... Feng's armor... I know, I checked that already, Crimson. Thanks. Um... So the whole purpose of the fourth, the third or fourth hit of that 10 hit string is to catch people punishing 1-1. One, one. So he has a negative 14 option. That's a natural combo on normal hit, but only 10 damage. It's there to keep the 1-1 one, one safer. But on block, it's negative 14. So yeah, he has that. It's not as good as I thought it was. Also, I thought for some reason you could convert off of the counter hit if he's still committed, but I guess not. I mean, maybe you could still just go into the rest of the string, right? Nope, you can't even do that. Can you delay it? No, that doesn't feel like you could delay it. Alright, so that's that. Alright, so... Zero, negative one on height. Alright, so next you got a standard 1-2, 10 frames, 18, uh, 16 damage, sorry. And his 1-2 is plus 7 on hits, negative 1 on block, so it's a standard 1-2 pretty much. 
Uh, and then he has one, two, two. Now this got nerfed. This used to give better frames on hit. I don't remember how 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 many uh, more frames it gave on hit. Here it's only plus one on hit. This is basically his standard 10 frame punish, but not everybody goes into this whole string anymore. Uh, it looks like it pushes out a tiny bit, and if you hold back, he's plus three instead of plus one. And when I get into his actual back turn stuff, we'll see what he could really frame trap with. Oh, he could frame trap with back turn one, because that's 12 frames. So he's unique. A lot of characters, when they jab from back turn, it's eight frames. Fangs is 12. But that back turn one is 12 frames, and it gives him a shoulder link. So basically, one, two, two, if you hold back and you land on one, you get a free shoulder link. So that's your frame trap there. You don't even need a counter here for that. But that is a high. And I don't think he has any other frame trap from back turn. All his other moves are definitely going to be slower, I'm pretty sure. Oh, uh, well, back turn generic standing four. All right, so I'll go more in depth into that when I go through his back turn stuff. Anyway, so yeah, one, two, two is 26 damage, plus one. Unless you hold back, it's plus three. One, two, two, and then you hold back, plus three. And spacing is um, not great. I feel like you can backdash a lot of stuff. If you can backdash away from the lows, then that gets away from a lot of this shit. Right? Let's go with the generic low. So if he hits you... Okay, nah, I can't backdash it. Oh, no, I can. Yeah, I can. Alright, so now that I know I can backdash that low, let's go with the AI backdashing now. Aha, it doesn't trip. Ah, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. The moment you know you get away from the most dangerous lows, that's when you know backdash is good shit. Okay, that reaches. Uh-huh. But that string chases you. Uh, I don't know what else he has. It seems like you backdash away from all mids except back turn 1 plus 2, unless there's any mids I'm forgetting. And the uh, back turn throw is... How you go back turn? Right. How you go back turn again? You're supposed to be able to go back turn... Whatever. Oh, go back turn. Asshole, go back turn. Well, the back turn throw isn't going to reach it. That Wow! <laughs> I think it's like the later that, uh, the later that time. So basically, if you backdash, uh, you will still get hit by the down three, but it won't trip you because it needs a clean hit to trip you. That's the launcher that he has from back turn. So backdash is a pretty good option that kind of fucks fucks up his mix-up off of this. Kind of. He can still hit you with the, the back turn mid elbows, one plus two, and the down three will reach. But then it becomes a super high risk down three because then it just becomes a non-triplo that's negative three on hit. That's super launch punishable on block. Ah, if you only do one, one, two, you can pick up any character with one plus four. Oh, it's the third hit? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ah, I see. But that still makes it negative 14 for, like, no damage. Yeah, there you go. That's what it was. I knew there was a pickup somewhere after that. Thank you. Okay, so. Now we got one, two, two out of the way. Next, we got one, three. <clears throat> this is probably the preferred jab punish because you sacrifice two damage, but you get plus six. Now, there is some pushback here. Let me make him stand still so you can really get a good look at this. There's some pushback here. Now, Feng is really hard to judge distance because his stance, his default stance, his left fist is sticking all the way out. I want to call attention to that, especially because that counts as a hurt box. Uh, so, stuff that like might hit him, you see how this jab, you see how it's whiffing sometimes? But if I'm in the perfect alignment to punch him in the fist, it's going to hit him, see? So that's going to mean that, like, you could kind of clip Feng, but that's also why this is so evasive, because he moves his fist all, you know, back. So he backdashes and he moves his fist back. That makes That's why he's extra evasive. But in general, that makes it, at least as of right now, a little difficult for me to, to gauge distance for Feng. I mean, his lows uh, seem to be standard as far as hitting because he has like a standard stance with his wide legs. But sticking that left fist all the way out makes it a little weird to judge uh, range right now in the mirror match, at least. Huh, all right, so. 
still, 1-3, it pushes out on hit, but it is plus 6. So you can work with that. Fish hook is probably a good follow-up. Let's see. Let's make him backdash. If he could, let's see what he could backdash as far as poking goes after getting hit. Hold on a second. Okay, good. They're still in range. They cannot backdash fish hook. Really good. Alright, they can backdash that. Uh, uh, Alright, well. Okay. As long as you have a mid option to go with the lows, you're good. Especially since fish hook, you cannot really sidestep it. It's really because he has enough frames on hit, and fish hook is so fast at 12 frames and has a lot of range that, um. They can't really fuck with that. Also, if they backdash and block it, it seems like their spacing is uh, gonna make it so the negative nine isn't as big a deal. All right. Even if they don't backdash, spacing is still kind of good. All right. But yeah, one three is pretty good. Does it jail if they use it in the neutral? Let's see. No, it doesn't jail. You gotta be careful. What is that, 15? 23, okay. <laughs> I was trying to see how I get a feel for uh, how, uh, how long the recovery is, but he just has a giant gap. 15 and then 23 frames. This is a big ass gap. Please let me know if the music is overpowering me. I can't tell because these meters lie to me all the time. I will lower this a bit just in case though. Anyway. So yeah, 1 3 is good. Only negative 5 on block if they do block it. And the 3 has counter hit properties. So if you do use it in the neutral, the question is can you convert? Try it like this. You only get a shoulder. Thank you. Ah, uh, he doesn't. He blocks as if it's like a. Well, you can make that shoulder hurt if you have a wall. Ooh. Not from far away. Yeah. Only up close if they mash after the jab, I guess. There you go. So if you have uh, a wall nearby, not even nearby, it could be pretty far away. You could totally do the, you know, the... It's not going to reach, though. You gotta hold it. Okay. I don't know if his uh, rage uh, shoulder does more damage. Okay. Well, point being, that shit sends him flying away, and then you could probably run up and still get a wall combo if the wall is uh, relatively close. It doesn't have to be that close because that shit sends him fucking flying super far away. Um, that's another uh, check option to go with your jab pressure. So to, to go with this, to catch people swinging, you can also go with that, to catch people swinging. And it'll check them real good. And then on normal hit, 17 damage isn't half bad. And you'll still be at plus 6. Alright, next. But it is dunkable, but once again, he has a mid option. But the mid option is slow enough that you could, that you could probably crouch and then stand block. It's not really like a mix of tool in that sense. It's just, I guess theoretically a less risky option because that's that's probably going to be blocked I guess if you want to think about it that way I want to use it too much though I'd rather use it more as like a jab punish personally that's just me though you do you so next we have standing two his standing two is 10 frames plus 5 on hits negative 3 on block and then he has 2-4 which is natural is it Oh shit, I just realized my R1 button is the missing button now, so going through these menus is going to be a little awkward. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, yeah, so it's a natural combo, right? And then 2 4 1, which is super delayable. 2 4 is not delayable, but 2 4 1 is. Uh, not a natural combo. Not even on counter hit. Second hit, I imagine, on counter hit will make the third hit combo, right? Yeah, knocks back. Uh, normal hit knockback, right? Ugh. Same thing on counter hit. And then you can hold back out of this string. Um, if you hold, you have to input two, uh, two, four, one. You have to input the last hit. And it's like Lily's core single forward one, two. You have to input the last hit and then hold back before he swings the last hit. To cancel, it's a back turn. So this is a popular one. This is one of those, like, one of the many ways Feng will get in your face to uh, vary his mix-ups. Uh, and you go right to down four. That's <laughs> pretty popular. But still, like, that last hit is supposed to keep people scared of swinging, especially since you could delay it. So basically, you're not using frame advantages here. You're using this deceptive, delayable mid. Very delayable mid. Yeah, and uh, I guess they thought it would be too good to make that a counter hit launcher. So they just made it a knockback with no counter hit properties other than extra damage. And then you can force whatever mix ups because you're going to be right in your face pretty much. It's just a 2 4 doesn't really push back. And uh, 2 1 4, uh, sorry, 2 4 1 rather, is negative 13 on block. 2 4 is negative 12. And if they swing on you, you're going to get hit in the rear. Now, what I want to know is, is there some sort of OS that can fuck people up here? Let's get as much delay as possible here. Oops. I'm just going to do that. Because down four is so fast. Did he cross that? Okay. Okay. Made me a cross jab. I think you can train yourself to verify the back turn and crouch jab him. Now, do I think this is worth doing? Maybe? Uh, you, may, you may not get it consistently mid-match. If you're geese, though, you could really push his shit in because that crouch jab is hitting him back turn. Right? So, <laughs> uh, if you're geese, you can land crouch jab forward one. He'll get counter hit still, so cross jab forward one is good there. Uh, do you guys have the link for Tekken Bot latest version? Um, I just, uh, if you go to the GitHub page for the Tekken Bot, or you search, I think, the Tekken Reddit, they'll tell you you have to edit a um, text file. It's in the comments. Also, there might be an, already an updated, uploaded uh, link in the GitHub archive. Just look, look, look up Tekken Bot Prime GitHub on Google. You'll find it. But yeah, um, in general, this is just another tool for you to use. Maybe not like a primary mix-up tool, but one of the many you use to throw your opponent into confusion because Feng has so many, so many, right? So many ways to go into back turn, to mix his opponent up. This is just another thing to think about, which means even though I'm saying here that I think if you're sharp, you can kind of react to the back turn cancel. Um, if you keep throwing out all sorts of different shit at your opponent and just kind of overwhelm them, it might not happen. Not to mention, you could just do this. And then you could totally create a whiff. Like, if I try to react to that, I'm probably going to whiff my crouch jab.
All right, well, you can totally uh, still do it, but man, is it risky if you're just a little bit slow. But still, that's there. Oh, Armor Move might not be a bad idea because at worst, you risk eating the generic Don 4. You risk eating that to stop your Armor Move. So Armor Move that hits mid is not a terrible idea there either. If you have that in your back pocket, a good one, at least. That's that. Next we got, uh, so the 214. Let's test the, if you could step it. If he delays it, you probably can. Oh boy. Oh boy, walk. Oh wow. <laughs> All right, you gotta walk left. Oops. All right. Oh, I got that a bit. Oh, really? All right. had this idea to test this now. This is probably going to catch you, right? Wow, you saw how his first jab whipped completely. Right into my face. Alright, good. So the low is going to keep some fun, man. See how the dude, it's the Feng Mirror that makes this happen because his stupid left fist is sticking all the way out, pushing the other Feng away. His first jab randomly whiffs. That's crazy. That's crazy. Feng's a bad matchup for Feng. Oh my god. If he doesn't have a mid that tracks. <sighs> really? Oh boy. <laughs> Alright. I'll find out when I get there. Uh, I'm a complete new to tech and not very familiar to fighting game and I was wondering what what to focus on. Royal Michael. Focus on the basics. What do I mean by the basics? Well, you're complete new to fighting games, right? So let me tell you this. So Tekken has three general attack levels, right? We're starting just from the super basic shit. Highs. You see how it says high and it's like a red thing when I hit them? Mids, these yellow things. See how it's like a yellow explosion? And then lows, the blue hits, right? Let's say low. And then there's like a thing called special mid, which crouch jazz and a couple of other moves are. Uh, but mainly the focus is going to be on regular mids, not special mids, and lows, right? That's like your general mix-up uh, plan at the beginner level because you cannot crouch block mids. See, he's... Uh, crotch guard see how he's trying to like block this blocks lows and it ducks highs but mids hit you when you duck right and then if you stand block of course you'll block highs instead of it missing and you can block mids too but then lows will hit you so low versus mid is your standard beginner mix-up right baby's first mix-ups uh then you have to take into consideration that, like, oh, but like, you know, you might wonder why, why, why are highs important? Well, general rule of thumb for Tekken, highs are your fastest moves, generally. 
in most cases. 99% situations, highs will be your fastest moves. And in most situations, highs will be better on block than mids and lows, like 99% of the time. For example, this, I don't know if you know anything about frame data, this is plus one on block. If you don't know anything about frame data, plus one means that the moment you block this, if you input something as early as possible, it will come out one frame slower, one sixtieth of a second slower. If my opponent blocks my jab and then inputs something, their thing is going to come out slower. So, for example, if my op if this opponent fen opposing fen inputs their jab after blocking this, my jab will still beat it out, even though it's the exact same move. Right? Jab, jab, right? So, see, I'm at negative one after the first jab. So, if I try to input jab, I'm going to get... Oh, I didn't record that right. That should be right. As long as you don't delay it. See? I can't jab him. Can't jab him. Can't do it. But it is a high. So you could duck. And if you're fast, because jabs recover very fast, you can punish that. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In general, remember this. No matter which character you pick in this game, you can start your offense with a jab. It only starts to get weird if you're playing as Asuka because she does not have a regular jab. Um, and Kuma, I think you have to hold forward to get his standard centering jab. If you don't hold forward, he gets a different move, I think. Um, so, Asuka is like her jab is negative three on block, but she has all these built in mix ups out of her jabs. So, anyway, once you get like a basic low versus mid mix up down with your, with your character, whatever, you know, whoever they may be. You generally want to look for like fast options, fast because the faster ones are usually safer because they're lower reward on hit. See, this is zero. All, if he blocks it, it's zero. So if he blocks it, we're in an even situation right now. That's a really good mid, and it's 14 frames, which is fast. Uh, most mid posts are going to range from 12 frames to 14, sometimes 15 frames. Uh, lows, your, your go-to low poke, generally, speed-wise, is going to be around 15, 16 frames. Your primary, sometimes 17. Your primary low poke. Which is a fast little chip low. But lows are almost never safe on block. So there is, you're never basically completely safe in second. Uh, if you're on a defense, you're, or whoever's on a defense, you're your opponent, they always have some sort of answer to your options. There's always an answer. There's always a way out. There's very few forced 50-50s in second, but that's, you know, I'm probably getting way too ahead of myself there. Just start with uh, whoever you want to play as. Look for a fast mid. Look for a fast low. Uh, learn a basic juggle. You don't have to go like day one and learn the most complicated juggle in the game. Just learn a really, really standard basic juggle that gets you uh, some good damage off of their primary launchers, which will be something like a hop kick or like, uh, for some characters, a down forward two. Not for Feng because he doesn't have anything like that. Like an uppercut. Of some sort <clears throat> a fast uppercut figure out a basic juggle that you could do easily and not drop and then worry about learning the advanced stuff later and then work on sidestepping sidestepping in second is kind of complicated to explain but if you started from scratch i don't want to like get too crazy with it i break all this down and if you scroll down you'll see my youtube i break all this down i made a video using tech and tag 2 explaining how to uh do offense in Tekken Tag 2, that pretty much still applies to this game. So that's like a good place to start. If you want to check that out. So yeah, if you got any other questions, feel free to ask. Alright, back to... What was I last talking about? The 214 string. Okay, so we went through that. Oh yeah, I was testing record size to the last hit, which he cannot, even if he delays it. But his back turn stuff gets blown up. Unless there's a homing option here that I'm not... That I'm forgetting about. How do you grab? He has a grab. Well, whatever. Alright. Anyway. Next is standing three. Now, this has a lot of range. This by itself might be good, too. I know this has a pretty good hitbox, too, doesn't it? Is that a high? That's a high, wow. This used to be like the way he would pick up slides, right? Like if I do this.
Which sucks if that's what he has to do, but whatever. No problem, man. What do you know about Fegway Boy? I don't know shit. Damn. I could have sworn that kick used to be like a pickup in weird situations like this. Maybe not. It is a high after all. Maybe it's another move that looks similar. Well, whatever. Uh, he has standing 3-3, which is high, high, natural combo. Does a jail. It jails, okay, so you can't duck after the first hit is blocked. <sighs> Negative 10 on block. Only plus one on hit. He is right in your face, though, so he could totally threaten with that. But if they backdash... Yeah, so... You can easily backdash, though. So you can't get too careless. Still fish hook though. Uh, all right, so that's three three, and then he has three three four, which much like two four one, you could hold back to cancel. <laughs> he still makes the sound effect, which is good, because there are definitely some motherfuckers that listen. And if you're built in mix up on a string, one of the options has like a different sound effect than the other, or no sound effect at all, that could actually fuck up the mix up. That's the thing that pe nobody, I feel like nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about using audio. Aren't humans supposed to react faster to audio than they are to visual? Isn't that like a proven thing? Well, there are audio tells on certain mix-ups. This one, he still makes the sound effect when you cancel the low. So that's good. See? Ha! Uh, pushes out. Negative six if he recovers back turn. Uh, oh, yeah. I didn't say this before, but two, one, four. Uh, sorry, two, four. I keep saying two, one, four. 241 if you cancel to back turn negative 13 on block negative 2 on hit this string 334 back turn is negative 17 on block uh negative 6 on hit so it's not about the frame data here it's about making people afraid of the last hit okay is this delayable yeah it's pretty delayable And the second hit is the label too, which makes me think. Yeah. Second hit on counter hit makes the third combo. And if you delayed, I'm assuming it's no longer gonna jail. I mean, that's a fair assessment, right? A fair guess, right? Yep, see? So if you don't, boom. So you could fish for counter hit on this string. And you cannot put as much delay on the last hit as you could with the other string, I think. Ooh. Thanks for the follow, Royal. Michael. Yeah, you could put not as much delay as you could on the 241, I think. But you can still put some delay on it. And I know that last hit by itself on counter hit knocks down. As far as what he gets guaranteed, you think those in the chat, let me know, because uh, I don't know. He, he recovers back turn if he finishes the string. Oh, it knocks down on normal hit? I didn't know that. Uh, mapper, what's up? I would strongly recommend not doing that. Uh, hold on a second. Standing three definitely won't pick that. Oh, uh, yeah. If you do back on uh, after three three, you want an enormous risk if they go to block the potential three three four and the. Of course. Oh. Thanks for the follow, Mapper. Uh, only time you finish the strings after a side set four at the wall. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I still want to know what the guaranteed option is off of this low. Do you know? Kale, you know how I do this. It doesn't matter about what's good or not. I'm looking for what, what the application of these moves are, and even if there is no application, I'm looking at what the reward is and what the punishment is for them. Because I'm not going to be playing thing, or am I? I don't know. But not, like, seriously. But I want to know how to punish him. Now, my question is, if I knock down here, 
Is that really his only a guaranteed follow up? The sweep? For 11 damage? Oh, 30. Yeah, 11 damage. That looks like it is. If I don't delay it. Maybe at the wall he gets something better. Probably a down three. Thank you. So, yeah, as KO was saying in the chat, you know, this is not a string that you really should be finishing. And this is definitely a string that I see uh, Feng players abuse too much when they're lower level Feng players. They think that this is like some serious shit that's like, oh, I'm going to keep on blocking and then I'm going to go low. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, sure, do that if your opponent doesn't know any better, but I would, admit, I, would, I would recommend not making a habit of relying on this string in that way. Now, what I will say is if you're just kind of fishing for this as a super long range poke, it's not bad. It's a lot of range, even though it's a high. A ton of range here and it's 16 frame startup. It's not bad. If you want something that's essentially less risky on block than that, in case you fuck up, totally reasonable to go for this instead. And you feel really good. Oh shit, never mind that. I was about to say if you feel really good about it, go for the second hit. But we just saw you you, you guys saw what I just saw there, right? <laughs> so if you're fishing for it from back here, don't go for the second hit. But the first hit, I don't think it's terrible. Zero on hit, but it pushes out. You're way back here, so they shouldn't be swinging. They swing, bang, keep that lock and loaded. Um, in general, though, I don't think this is terrible by itself. And then on block, it's negative 11. But once again, you're all the way back here. They're not going to punish it. So from back here, this first hit by itself is not the worst thing in the world, in my opinion. It's probably Lanier as hell, though. So I said that plus one. Surprise, surprise, it's Lanier. Oh. <laughs> All right, so that's that. I still don't think the first hit is terrible. But the, the rest of the string, this is a wall combo. Especially since you could delay the last hit. You could get the, the low wall hit on it. I don't know if it's his best wall combo, but it is one of them. What's up, Cross? How's it going? Decent for Oki if you want to wake up, uh, if you want back turn Oki at the wall. Yeah, that's probably why. Back turn Oki at the wall is pretty good for him. So, like, easy. Easy low wall hit. What about, why have no delay? If I, okay, if you don't, you have to delay it to get the low wall hit. You see that? 8 damage, 36%. Pose you to the owner. You have to delay it. And then you get 13 damage in the end. That's, uh, for those of you that don't know, that's every character in the game. You ever hear the term low wall hit? That's what it's talking about. If you connect a hit at the end of your wall combo, uh, basically toward the end of the frames before they can tech, you will reset the scaling, the damage scaling to 60% on the last hit. Which is why many wall combos and in either delayable strings or strings like a one two into a very fast option like lily doing two hit strings into a one plus two for 12 frames <clears throat> and then of course as was mentioned in chat by ko you're gonna recover back turn so if they tech after this wall combo they have to deal with like all sorts of crazy shit like this would probably give them free shit right i don't know what but Oh, I know it. Whatever. Um, oh, well, whatever. I'm assuming that might give him something free when his back is to the uh, when his uh, when your back is to the wall. Right. Well, whatever. I'll go through that stuff later when I get to the wall stuff. Oh, thanks for the host, Bosma. What's up, funny thinker? How's it going? get a uh, one shoulder oh that's cool that's a lot of damage and that wall splats shit i should have tested that oh well 
I'll, I'll try to remember that. <laughs> Damn, so that at the wall gives you the back turn one, which gives him the shoulder. That's pretty good. It's pretty cheap. Fuck it. Let's see the damage. That's not gonna give you a full wall splat though, cause the back turn one plus two is gonna is gonna cause a stun. That's still gonna be good damage, right? Yeah, and the shoulder is gonna be an automatic low wall hit. Thank you for the tip. That's good. You don't have to delay the shoulder to get the low wall hit. That'd be sick though if the back turn one pursuit just stunned them for the back turn one, like a link, and then he shoulder them into the wall, and that gives you a full wall comp. That would be fucked up. That would be super fucked up for a safe mid option. That's crazy. Alright, so that's the 3-3 three, three string. Next we got his uh, 4. 11 frames. Uh, it is sort of a magic 4 in that he gets a free follow-up. Not a juggle, though. But if you have rage, that... Yeah, I don't think it does more damage, but... Um, okay, it does 5 more damage, and it will wall splat from pretty far away. At least I think it would. That wasn't a normal knockdown. That was like one of those weird rolling knockdowns. If it doesn't wall spat, he'll get some sort of free follow-up near the wall, I'm sure. Uh, the, only, the only way you can re-splat close to the wall is micro back dash top four three. Got it. All right, so that's his magic four plus three on hits. Shitty hitbox. The range isn't great on this. Um, what is it on block? Negative eight on block. How's the tracking on this thing? Oh, that's um. Okay. I've learned my lesson. You, to test tracking, you have to test like a range of frames. You can't just test zero or plus one. You need to test if you got negative two, you know, I gotta, I don't recover standing though. Um, you gotta test negative two and all that shit, negative three, because this game gets really weird with the tracking. There's a lot of really weird shit going on with the tracking in this game. It's like more broken than it's ever been before. It doesn't, it, it's like inconsistent, very inconsistent in this game. All right, so it's standing four doesn't have any tracking, but it's there. 11 frames, that's nice. Uh, 17 damage, so it might not be a terrible juggle filler depending on when you do it. What's the break on back turn? Oh, that's how you input it. It's probably going to be 1 plus 2. I was looking for that, though. Thank you. It's 1 plus 4. That's probably going to be a 1 plus 2 break. I'll tell you right now, though. So he lost the back turn mix-up because of the throw break change. Uh, the, the rules to the, the... The change to the rules for throw breaking. All right. Um. Wait. What am I controlling? Oh, reset. That confused me because we switched sides. So that's probably going to be a 1 plus 2 break if I were to guess. Yeah, see, 1 plus 2. So the thing is, for those of you that don't know, throw break rules. You look at the hands. You see how the left hand is leading? That's a one break. Left jab. You see how the two hand is leading? That's a two break. Right jab. In most cases, King is the one that breaks the rule for the left left hand. Um, and then there are some throws that are unbreakable. If you see both hands reaching out evenly, that's one plus two break, right? Now the thing about back turn is from back turn, generic throws this and this, sorry, and that look like one plus two. They all look like that. So if I go uh, and I input two plus four, 
it looks like a one plus two break. That does not matter in this game anymore. It's still a, essentially a 50-50 for Feng, but it used to be a three-way guess, right? Because, and 100% three-way guess. Now it's a 50-50 guess. Reason being now, generic throw breaks, you could input either one or two. There are still command grabs that reach out that this way that where you have to input one or two to go with the hand. But now your standard two plus four and one plus three throws could break with either punch. That includes the back turn throws. So now Feng's back turn throws, since they all look like one plus two breaks, it's a mix up on either the one plus four from back turn or either the generic throws from back turn. Instead of a three way guessing game, because there's three different breaks in the older games. Yeah. You can do two plus three? Okay, I know that. That's cool. So that's a universal rule. Every character from back turn, their generic throws look like one plus two breaks. But if they don't have some sort of mix up grab from back turn like Feng does, it doesn't matter. You can input either punch and it's going to break it. Yeah, it's a 50 50 uh, guess on the throw break instead of a three way guess. <clears throat> All right, so we went to the standing four. Okay, so two tilt and one is next. So for those of you who don't know, in second, if you see a notation where it's uh, tilde, like in this case, two tilde one, I'm just going to type it out for those of you who don't know what a tilde is for some reason, you non-cultured motherfuckers. That means piano, one after the other, bam, right? Bam, Feng has a lot of those. That's, oop, that's two tilde one, bam, one after the other. Two tilde one. How does this look on the move list? So we can see. I think it puts it. It uh, shows it in the parentheses. Yeah. See. Mad windmill. So the first hit there. That's two tilde one. In the parentheses. But we type it out with the tilde. And of course, that means he has that one follow up, and that's a launcher. That's an instant course crew launcher. So you don't get a second course through out of that. Oh, wow. <laughs> it whiffed anyway. I don't know how to convert off of that. Alright, well, the first set of two to the one <clears throat> is only negative three force crouch on block. Not bad. How oh, fast? 24 frames though. Yikes. Um, and it's plus five force crouch on hit. So force is crouch on block and on hit. Second hit is negative 12. Uh, hit confirmable? Hit confirmable? Hit confirmable. Oh, it's not as bad as I thought. It's on the slow side, but... So if you want to practice your hit confirms, you set random guard into guard all. Random guard is the first option. I'm not good at anchor for me if, in case you couldn't tell, but if I could get it, if I could get it, that means you could get good at this. This is definitely something you can work on to turn into a hit confirmable launcher. It's very slow though, 24 frame startup. So this is not something you just like, you use as a mix up tool. This is just something you just kind of throw out every once in a while and then confirm it and then throw out the second hit if it connects. Um, Oh, he can get a second course screw out of that. Go figure. Go figure. And counter hit snake dash. Uh, okay. Uh, counter hit goes circle for one. Better pick up his full three. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Uh, anyway. All right, so you can pick up with uh, down back one four. You don't even have to dash. You just input it right away, which is nice. And then I don't know what the best juggle would be, but I mean, just random, randomly threw that one together in my head. That's the easy one, 68 damage. Off of a hit confirmable mid launcher? That's only, the first hit is only negative uh, five, five, three? Negative three on block, force crouch, which means you can still move. And for those of you who don't know, when you make an opponent force crouch, they can only instantly sidestep towards the background. Now, if you're playing online, you might not know what their background is because they can make themselves show up uh show up as player uh one one piece side right while you see them as two piece side because you're set to one piece side you're not going to be able to tell unless you pay attention but 
that is valuable information on on moves that force crouch always because then it determines like if you're when you get really knowledgeable of the matchups and you know how characters while standing uh options track and you know how your options track as far as your options track to only that as far as your options that only track to once i can't talk today i don't know what's wrong with me guys as far as your options that only track to one side that's valuable information because then you know hey this guy's on player two side he could only, if he wanted a sidestep, he could only go towards my left. What do I have that tracks to my left? Not only that, if he were to swing instantly, he's going to swing with something like this, or like this, or this, or this. How do those track? So I could sidestep in either direction. I only have to think about him sidestepping towards one side. So what are my strong options to cover that side in case he sidesteps? And what are my options to sidestep? Like, which direction should I sidestep to cover his strong options from while standing? That matters more for some characters than it does for others, though. There are a lot of characters that get, like, um, Force Crouch Plus on block moves. I can't, for some reason, I can't think of one right now. I would say Marduk, but he's not around anymore. <laughs> so, Marduk's down one. So, that got nerfed throughout the games. Alright, so. Second hit, negative 12. It also looks slow, so let's see if we can step it. Another second. Okay, so it, the second hit can still counter hit you. On normal hit, it launches, and you can't step it. There's no, there's no gap there. Ooh, it's such a slow move that stepping is a little weird. Ooh, look at that. All right, so you want to go away from it for sure. Oh, and you want to walk it. You don't want to step this. Let me try to delay a little more. Yeah, even if I delay it because it's such a slow move, it's still going to catch me. So there is some some step tracking here. But if you sidewalk it, you're going to want to go to your left. Things right. And you're going to get his rear. Oh, the second hit knocks down in the back. Okay, good. So you can't get like a full 10 hit string on the back. <laughs> They really nerfed the shit out of that kind of stuff. In the older games, you would get full 10 hit strings on everyone's backs. Like, with, with pretty much the whole character, the whole cast. The whole character, the whole cast. <sighs> okay, so, that first hit has you covered for steps pretty well. Uh, what's going on in the chat? Pay forward for you guys are just talking about this stuff. Okay, anyway. 3 till the 4 is next. Okay, this move. This is a normal hit launcher, right? Maybe not. Okay, you can hold back to recover back turn. Negative 12, force crouch on block. If you hold back turn, negative 7, force crouch on block. Which is not safe. Things get weird. 10 frames, okay. Things get weird in these situations. Oh, wrong way. Essentially, you got a free wall standing forward to the back. Uh, Feng doesn't have a 12 frame, does he? 14. That's too slow. Man. Oh, well, you definitely got 11 frames in the back, which means you've got a crouch jab in the back. Yeah, which means geese really fuck you up with this. Um, I mean, I guess that's there if you want to hold the back turn if you hit him. Uh, it probably breaks the floor at the wall. If I already guess, right? And then he also has a follow-up uh, by inputting three, which is uh, another thing that newer players like to abuse. Because I'm assuming it works. It's admitted to a low built in, right? And I think the low by itself is a jungle starter. Okay, so yeah, 
we can pick up with some stuff here. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing this in a neutral situation so much. Maybe the first is okay. What's the, uh, the first? If you hold back afterwards and do four into the shoulder. Wait, what? You hold back afterwards and do four into the shoulder? Ah, got it. There you go. So that's how you combo off of the first hit. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a strong... Yeah, 27 damage. So this is a floor break in the floor break stage. As far as like a single hit floor break goes. Um, I don't know if you can really get this after... Uh... Yeah, it's too slow. Maybe at the wall. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so maybe at the wall, but uh, mid-stage, maybe not. How about a few? It's not going to work there. Down 3 plus 4? That's not a move. I don't know what Dom Demon's for, it's not me back turn. No, Dom Demon's for is not a move. Oh, okay. Okay, you mean stomp. Alright. I mean, damage wise, it's not. <laughs> damage wise, it's, that's trash. 19 damage? Maybe use it as a meeting. No, this is the meaty move. This is the meaty move for Feng right here, which uh, I'll get to soon. As a matter of fact, it's the next move I'm going to talk about. Uh, this is 27 damage. This is 27 damage, so if this... If this, this I'm assuming it breaks the floor. Let me just check instead of assuming it. If I can get that over the, over the ground stomp... I'll take that shit any day. I already went through Raven. If you scroll down, you'll see the links on my YouTube. Which, I should probably put, like, a YouTube button there instead of just YouTube link and text. But I already went through Raven. I, it took me, like, 12 hours. <laughs> and I barely remember shit, to be honest with you. Because that was, like, uh, last year, last summer. I, I, I did learn a lot at the time, but, like, I don't remember it at all right now. I gotta watch uh, my old stuff. Also, it's, you run into her so rarely, so it's like... There are characters where, like, I, I learned a lot doing these, and then I run into them all the fucking time. And it's like, alright, and I start remembering that stuff more and more. How often do you fucking run into Raven? Let alone a competent Raven. Competent enough to use that kind of stuff that you would learn off of that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so maybe in a wall carry situation. I had the wall carry. Um, oh, wrong button. Oh, wrong button. Ah, oh, that was it. I didn't put it in the wrong. Oh, that was in the shoulder. I did one plus two to the back one plus two. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> What's up, Zakishi? How's it going? Uh, is that better than full uh, damage and forward 4-3? Four, I don't know, is it? 15. It's two hits. It's two hits. That second hit does a lot of damage, though. But it is two hits. Here's my here's my argument for, like, exploring this move, which I'm assuming proper Feng mains already have because this game's been out forever. One hit, 27 damage. Right? Two hits, 15, 21 damage. Although the second hit is really more like 30 damage. But two hits, 
so the scaling's gonna fuck with it. That's the only thing I could think of. Hey, Rojo, I just started recently. I, I'm, I'm not that far into the move list. That's the only thing I could think of, other than maybe using this mistake sometimes because it's not super risky. And you do get some uh, decent damage off of it if you hold back. You know, if you hold back, it's like a while standing forward most matchups. It's not a big deal. But outside of that, I wouldn't really use that move. It's also super duper slow, so people that are moving around a lot, easy with punish. Headbutt stomp. Outside of that, I don't know. Maybe it's not the best move. Let's see. I don't think it tracks, but we're going to test anyway. <laughs> surprise, surprise, right? Okay, he kind of turns with you. I mean, it still whips, but he does kind of turn with you if you go, right? But if you go the other way... So at the very least, you won't get his back <laughs> if you go to your right. But yeah, no tracking. <clears throat> Alright, so next is uh, 4 to the 3. So as I said earlier, this is the Oki move. This is the meaty move for you 2D fighting game players. There's not very many moves that are used in, as meaties and seconds. No, I suspect that the Tekken bot is making people look at meaties more and more. It's certainly making me think about them more and more in this game. Uh, in general, it's very rare where you're like, because in 2D fighting games, you have, uh, in most of them, your standard 2D fighters, not like anime fighters, shit like that, with like a million different ways to get up. Your standard 2D fighting game that has maybe like regular get up, delayed get up, and then like a back row recovery get up, you, you, you pretty much already know that those get ups take X amount of frames every single time. Your moves, your throws, your knockdowns recover in X amount of frames, so you can easily set up meaties. That's not the case in Tekken. There's too many ways to get up. You can stay down indefinitely. There's too many ways to fuck up meetings. Which is why people generally, outside of the super obvious moves like this, people generally didn't really look at meetings back then. At least most players. At least they weren't talked about. They did. They kept it to themselves. Uh, but now that we have uh, this Tekken bot that tells us, you know, this has 10 active frames, and it tells me what active frame I'm hitting on, all of a sudden, you know... We could explore these things more, like with Lily last time. I, I I know that when you knock down with Lily's forward three plus four, the double cartwheel kick, and you go into her down forward three. If they hold back to get up, they're gonna you're gonna get basically guaranteed that they're gonna block the last active frame. So it becomes plus five on block instead of plus three on block, right? So in general, this is just a tool to use that if people tech, you're gonna hit with the later active frames. And if people stay down, you're going to stomp on them and pretty much uh, reset your Oki for the most part in a lot of situations. As far as when specifically to use it, that's something I don't really know. So negative four at worst. Plus, uh, what does it say here? My math. My math. <laughs> and I love your support. Thank you, Zakishi. <coughs> <coughs> you got me all choked up over here. Thank you. <coughs> I got to drink water. Oh, whew, I needed that. Thank you very much. Plus five on block at best. Minus four on block at worst. Whew, and then on hit, it's plus four. Some water fell on my stick, which is bad because I have a gap in my stick now with the missing button. Uh, plus four on hit at worst. It says here, that's knock down. Yeah, plus four force crouch on hit at worst. At best, we have plus, what the hell is it? I lost track. Plus 13 force crouch. Now, you could probably link a fish hook. At plus 12, if I could get, get plus 12, which is probably only going to be in a tech situation, right? 
could probably link a fish hook. Because he's forcing crouching, so you cannot do a high. I probably won't be able to do this. From stand not in the standing situation. Plus six. Plus eight. Plus eight. Alright, especially with Feng's dumbass stance with his uh, left arm sticking all the way out like that. Anybody know a good Oki setup for this? Because I know he has a shitload after juggles, right? Let's turn on tech. Down people's four, right? I tried it there while holding the four down. They didn't come out. Oh no, down back one. Let's fucking do the flip. Up forward four four. Side step right forward three four dash four to the three. You gotta do a short dash four to catch them if they hold back. Let's try holding back them. Micro sidestepping till they're using. <laughs> Alright, this is why you guys say you gotta dash anyway, right? So you gotta delay it a bit. Ah, I tried to run and do it, and I got that. I got forward, forward, forward. So maybe I should just hold forward, right? I gotta let go. Okay. That's plus four. One frame away. Right? See why fake players drop this shit so much. I definitely see them go for this. Even in offline tournaments, they go for this shit and it gets dropped. This shit is crazy. It's not like super hard to do, but it's just annoying, pesky enough that like a little slip up in your execution, it all falls apart for him. And then he gets this gigantic whiff on the forward 3 4, which makes him eat shit if they tech. Oh, I was holding the wrong button. Fuck. <clears throat> Come on. Do the flip, asshole. That's still a lot of damage considering how good the Oki is. 
If you don't fuck it up. There it is. It comboed. It comboed. That's a link. That's a link, boys. 39 damage. So if you react to the handspring hitting them, if they tech, if they tech it's dunk for some weird reason, you can link a fish hook. The moment I saw plus four on Bach, I knew it was good for him. Uh, does anyone know what Josie's punish for Death Fist? Oh, uh, as Feng? Uh, oh, oh, what? I'm an idiot. Josie's punish for Death Fist. Forward plus one plus two. Forward plus one plus two. Forward plus one plus two. Yeah, Token. You see what I'm saying? This is why I started talking about now we could explore active frames much better. We could explore active frames much better now. Now that we got Tekken Bot and we know the numbers. We know the numbers. That's a, and you know that is, you fake players know that's a common setup. So now that you know, you practice this for a bit using the Tekken Bot, you get the timing down on that. You know that the moment in that situation, you see the fucking head spring connect. Back four. Bam, back four. Connect. 39 damage Oki. Because they fucking um, plus on block Oki. Plus on block Oki. So if they end up blocking it, you're plus. If they end up getting hit, you're going to get that 39 damage total. That's good shit. And if they stay down, they still eat shit because the fucking head spring connects. There's a um, random aside. There's a uh, pro wrestling thing in China right now called, they call it this, and they're based in China, Oriental Wrestling Entertainment, all right? They call it that. Uh, <laughs> but they have this monk character. I can't remember his name right now. He straight up does this. He does that shit like crazy. It's fucking nuts. This dude, they be trying to attack him. He like flips like that, and then he lands into a sitting position while praying. That shit is sick. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Uh, up four one versus crouching gives a free fish hook. Oh really? Oh, it's one of those that gives them like a ton of frames if they're crouching. Oh yeah, it is one of those. Julia had something like this, but I think she needed a counter hit. But she could convert some sort of mid poke into a combo if it counter hit a crouching opponent. I think. Fish hook. That's shitty damage, but that's there. That's cool. <coughs> Links are easier to confirm, obviously, than strings. All right, so now that we got the hand swing, so yeah, this move is crazy. This is one of those moves that, you, as a Feng player, you could explore so many situations, so many knockdowns with this move. He has jungle enters, as you could clearly see from earlier, that set this move up really well. And it's safe on block, even if it's not like time wall, so. Negative four. Four scratch, was it? Yeah, four, on block? Uh, no, no, not on block, only on hit. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way. Ah, Feng's first Sabaki. Parry. Sabaki. Parry built into the move. One plus two. So. This move is negative 13 on block, but the startup. The startup parries. Now, what frames does it say here on RB Norway? It says... It absorbs one hit higher mid, it says. Um... Starting on frame two, frames two to seven, according to RB Norway, frames two to seven are your parry frames. Um, yeah, see, so that it's not gonna work there. It's gonna work when you're in a negative situation more often than when you're in a plus situation. That forces crouch, right? Yeah. Shit, that forces crouch. Um, okay. Clearly, I'm not good at this on Toopy side. Okay. Yeah. 
as you can see, that's what happens. Now, there's a lot of uses for this move. Here's one that I learned the hard way. I learned this on stream, actually. The moment you see who I pick, you guys probably know where I'm going with this. It doesn't matter where I go here. So yeah, both options, obviously, right? Right? And I think he gets a juggle off of that, right? He does. He probably gets something better than that, even. So here's the fucked up thing, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Okay, he can block it. Wow, I guess it was me fucking up. I thought he wouldn't recover in time from the run to block it. Of course, Giga could also delay his options, but the last thing Giga needs with this shitty ass rage drive is yet another thing to think about mixing up, you know? It's like, come on. Alright. So, if you get to Sabaki, he gets a follow up. But if you just connect it on regular hit, um, I don't know if he still gets a follow up. Does he get anything? He gets nothing on normal hit, right? Oh, uh, guaranteed dash shoulder. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Not, uh, not super easy, but not super hard either. It's doable if you're like new and shit at this stuff. And that will definitely give you a little extra damage and probably some free follow-ups near the wall, obviously. <coughs> Is there a better pickup off of the Sabaki than run up 1 plus 4? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Is there a better pickup off of the when it, when it parries other than this? Because that's what I got. Dash forward. Okay, there you go. Dash forward plus, uh, let's see. Ooh. Oh. Too much dash. Oh, why did I mash it? That's actually kind of... Alright, for newer players, I wouldn't recommend doing that. That's not the easiest thing to do. It's an awkward thing to do if you're not used to it. What's, what I'm doing is... Well, first of all, I'm holding the two. So I'm buffering so I can input while holding two forward plus one and I'll get it. Second of all, double tap forward, then neutral, then forward one plus two. That's what I'm doing. But you have to, like, not delay it too much, otherwise it whips. So if you want the easier pickup as a placeholder, then dash up into that. And then whatever the hell he does after that shit, right? Do it, asshole. Oh, I turned it off. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's, it's a whatever. Jab, down, back, one, four, I guess. Oh, man. Maybe I go right into that. I need to do. I need to do friendly pickup. There you go. Hey, and then run up forward before maybe. All right. Then you, if you get to run up forward before, you got to do the same trick. That's annoying. Well, whatever. Uh, 
forward, 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 one plus two. Yeah, I don't do that forward, forward, forward trick. I mean, if you're used to it, that's fine. I find forward, personally, this is just me. I find forward, forward, neutral, forward, one plus two easier to do for those kind of things. Rather than it putting while running. No, actually, you know what? It's easy for Fen. Maybe I think it's because of Bob. Any character that has a, uh... Yeah, Fen... Okay, he does have a 4 for one plus 2 but he doesn't have a, uh... Okay. So, if the character has to do a neutral input, then I do... Then it, I would recommend the, uh... 4 4 neutral option, like for Bob's uh, run-up 4-3, four, 3 3 plus 4. Because Bob has forward 4 as a separate move, and forward 4 4 as a separate move. In this case, we're doing the forward move. So while running one plus two, okay, is doable. You're right. Sorry about that. Forgot about that. But in the case, if you had to do, for example, run up four, I would recommend doing my way. But in this case, while running one plus two is fine. And that, that does make it easier. I don't know what the best juggle would be, but you do some bullshit. Oh, I picked stage. Character select. <sighs> Man, why am I getting hungry already? I should have eaten right before doing this. Does four one plus two with for Josie? I guess that's this. Is four four three a launcher for Josie? I don't even remember what that is. I mean, I, uh, if it's like uh, Bruce's, then it's a super long range string. I know that. That goes into stance. But uh, are you sure forward one plus two? Uh, does that parry only work on jabs? I'm not sure. Yeah, looks like it does. Yeah, it's jabs only, but it is highs and mids, obviously. Otherwise, it wouldn't work against Gigas' mix-up. Or not, not against both options, either. So yeah, that's that. Next is one plus four, which is the low high. This is some weird shit they gave him in tag two. This is this. I mean, it's plus six. I don't think this is very useful outside the jungles, personally. It's super low damage, and it's fucking launch punishable. This shit is weird, and it doesn't even crush. This guy has like a billion crush moves that like aren't as bad on block, right? Well, not that, but. He could do the generic low with down 3 plus 4, down both kicks. So he has the 12 frame low. Very important. Uh, he's got this as a general low poke. It's fine. He's got that, which pushes out at least. But this is like probably bad on block too, right? Yeah, it's negative 17, but this is one of those pesky down threes. You could tell. He would have a lot of trouble launching this, right? Depending on the matchup, right? You could tell. Watch. Oh no, while standing three looks like it has good range. Oh, but not good enough. He's like Kazumi. Alright, see so if if you block it without the back dash. So yeah, he's one of those. So depending on the matchup, down three is really good too. I'll tell you guys right now, Kazumi can't launch this. She has an 18 frame while standing too. That's negative 17 on block. Kazumi has a lot of issues launching her own down three in the same way. 
and like any generic down three. Generic down threes are super good. The frames lie for this, depending on the matchup. There are some characters that will have no problem launching this no matter where they block it. Oh, and it crushes off frame four. That's better than usual. You're right about that. Otherwise, but even then, that's not a big deal because otherwise you would just use the generic 12 frame lock. I mean, sure, there's more damage here. But whatever. They both uh, serve a similar purpose. Uh, depending on the matchup, like I said, that pushback makes it really cheap. Hell, Feng himself might not be able to block punish it with any of this. Oh, while standing 1 2, actually. While standing 1 2 would probably be how he punishes it. Yeah. So yeah, something. Because while standing 4 ain't gonna reach. <clears throat> and those moves, I don't know about Fengs, but those moves tend to track really well. That's why they're good. You can't step those generic down throughs. Although his isn't generic looking, frame wise, it's generic. 16 frame low, negative frame block. So, anyway, uh, yeah, like he has so many low posts that it's like, why use this in a neutral situation? You want to keep him standing at plus six up with a low? I guess that's fine. That's a very specific wants to have I guess maybe at the wall that's especially nasty I kind of wish he were able to get plus six back turn off of this then he'd have some real usage with this in a neutral situation it's not useless it's just I don't get it well let's see pause the track oh, so yeah you see it's super bad on the lock Daggers. Okay, as a you know, a lot of those track this well though. So even that's not a big deal. Look at that. If I walk, if I walk, he eats shit. Only making a two on a high, so that's cool. But it is a high. And then you get that happening. Oh, look at that! But it's in his favor. Okay, it's not in his favor. He's punishable. So, 11 frame. I don't have a 12 frame to test that I know of at the moment. Oh, I do, actually. So it, it leaves an 11 frame gap if you if you happen to make the second hit whiff. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. <laughs> 